And three and two and one and shalom, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, what we did is we went over Emmaus. And uh, from there, as we learned about the Danaids, Danaids, uh, however that's pronounced, it started reminding me of this story. Of course, when 50 women kill their husbands, right? It reminds me of uh, the biblical story of Jael, or Jael, however you want to pronounce it. Um, all right, so, a little brief behind it is uh, the Hebrew word Yael literally translated, translates to he shall ascend or go up, is a woman mentioned in the book of Judges as a heroine who killed Sisera and delivered Israel from the troops of King Javan. All right, so it's an interesting story. You've never heard about this. Sisera, right? We know this word because it's usually spelled with a C. Is the commander of a Canaanite army of King Jabin of Hazar, who was mentioned in the book of Judges 4 through 5. After being defeated by forces of Israel, the tribes of Zebulon and Naphtali, under the command of Barak and Deborah, Mm, the story is down here, and uh, briefly get into it. Um, Deborah, a prophetess, a Jewess, and judge advised Barak to mobilize the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulon at Mount Tabor. Don't pay attention to their fake-ass picture. Right? And uh, to do battle against Javan of Canaan, Barak demumbered, saying he would go, provided she also. Deborah agreed, but prophesied that the honor of defeating Javan's army would then go to a woman. Javan's army was led by Sisera. The armies met in the plains of Esh Dralion when Sisera's iron bound chariots became hampered by the mud caused by the downpour during that night caused the Wadi Kishon to overflow its banks and the Canaanites were defeated and Sisera fled the scene. He arrived at the foot of a tent of Heber in the plain of Za'amim. Uh, I'm not pronouncing that one right. Heber and his household were at peace with Jabin, the king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. Baal, however, sympathized with the Israelites because of the 20 year period of harsh oppression inflicted by them on them by Javan, his commander Sisera, and his 900 iron chariots, jails who tent would have been separate from Hebrews, welcomed Sisera into her tent and covered him with a blanket. Sisera asked Jael for a drink of water. She gave him milk instead. He commanded Jael to watch over the tent and tell if any inquirers, tell any inquirers that no one was there, right? With 900 in chariots, no one's here. All right, so uh, quietly Jael took a mallet and drove a tent peg through Sisera's temple into the ground while he was sleeping, killing him instantly. So again, you, that's a long ass 
tent pole there, buddy. To go through a skull and into the ground. So, you know, mountain man skull, right, is at least, you know, eight inches, some seven, eight inches wide. So, so through the temple, and so she nailed him, right? And JL was the woman, was then the woman with honoring the defeat of Javan's army, army as prophesied, as prophesied by Deborah. And she showed Barak to Sarah's dead body in her tent. The song of Deborah recounts. <clears throat> so, extolled above woman BJL, extolled above woman in the tent. He asked for water, she gave him milk, she brought him cream in a lordish dish. She stretched forth her hand to a nail, her right hand to the workman's hammer. She smote to Sarah, crushed his head. She crashed through the transfixed his temple. Trans crashed through and transfixed his temples. Okay, so you hear the in the poem. It, it's beyond the idea that the nail went into the ground. It's that she crushed his head when she tried to nail through one temple into the other. Right, transfigured, disfigured his temples. So that's that's his eye sockets. Right. So she, she, she mallet bashed him. So scholars have long recognized that the Song of Deborah on the basis of linguistic evidence, the archaic biblical Hebrew, is one of the oldest parts of the Bible dating back to the 12th century BC. Extra biblical references, uh, Book of Liber Anti Antiquitum Biblicarum. So Jael took the stake in the left hand, approaching him, saying, If God will work this sign with me, I know that Cesare will fall into my hands. Behold, I will throw him down to the ground from the bed on which he sleeps, and if he does not feel it, I know that. He was, that he has been handed over. And Jael took Sisera and pushed him into the ground from the bed, but he did not feel it because he was very groggy and Jael strengthened. <clears throat> she said, strengthen in me today, is she my hand, excuse me, my arm, my hand on the account of you and your people and those who hope in you. And Jael took the stake and she put it on the temple and struck it with a hammer. And while he was dying, so Sarah said to Jael, Behold, pain has taken hold of me, and I die like a woman. I highly doubt that's really said. And if you get we've seen people get shot in the head, you're driving a nail through someone's head and you crush their head with a hammer, you're not saying anything. Alright? She said to him, go boast therefore your father in hell and tell him that you have fallen in the hands of a woman. All right, so. Uh, when we go forward, you know, it'd be something if we saw something about these uh, Denides, Denades over here. But again, it doesn't. Uh, with the Bible writing the story, of course, they can't change it out of the hands of Hebrew, right? So, as you look over here, we go to the Denids, and this, again, it reminds me of the same thing. A woman striking the man down in the bedquarters. Um, and it says that the Denids were 50 daughters of King Danis, who we just read about briefly. Everything about Danis really just revolves around his daughter, his daughters. Uh, doesn't really even talk about him being king or, or, or really much of what he's king of. The Ovid refers to them as the Belids after their grandfather, Belus. So, Belus was the king of Egypt and father of Egyptus and Danus and usually the brother Agnior. The wife of Belus has been named Archiro or side 
uh, they were married. They were to marry the fifty sons of Danis' twin brother Egyptus, a mythical king. So again, these are mythical kings, but you're going to find at the end of this a a uh, real dynasty comes from this so, okay you just keep saying it's myth right and again if you want to hide negro history just use greek and roman gods we all know re greek and roman gods are labeled as myths right so it's a mythical king of egypt in the most common version of the myth all but one of them kill their husbands on the wedding night and are condemned to spend eternity carrying water in a sheave or perforated device, meaning uh, a colander, something with holes in it, right? The classical tradition, uh, they came to represent the fertility of a repetitive task that can never be completed because each everything they're carrying the water in has holes in it. So when they transport it from one area to the other, they spill the water all out, you know, blah, blah, blah. So. Danis did not want his daughters to go ahead with the marriage, and he fled with them in boats, in the first boat, in the, in the first boat ever. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So they went to Argos, which is located in Greece, near the ancient city of Mycenae. Excuse me, Mycenae. Danis agreed to the marriage of his daughters only after Egyptus came to Argos with his 50 sons in order to protect the local population. Okay, so you're not going to bring the sons that will marry the daughters to protect the population. We previously read this story, um, and what is being left out is when he comes, he brings his army. What are they called? The uh, Argives? He brings the Argives. Oh, there it is right there. It's not really left out, right? The Argives from any battle. To protect the local population, the Argives from any battle, right? And who are the Argives? Again, the Argives, uh, they're not going to put the Argives there, but we already know that's the, the, the military soldiers. The daughters were ordered by their father to kill their husbands on the first night of their wedding. Now, again, now it is... Uh, Excuse me, the story has always been the same. It's one brother and another brother. And now that doesn't make quite much sense. If they're from the same bloodline, you don't want your son, you know, your, your nephews to marry your daughters, right? That doesn't make much sense. But again, if they're from a different bloodline, especially if you consider three biblical forefathers and they don't want to cross forefathers bloodline so when you sit here so so again they say they say that Danis starts what Libya and then goes to Argos which is in Greece so they claim that Egyptus of course is the start of Egyptus so you know Take it at a, at a grain of salt for right now. You know, as 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 we go further, and these names uh, are shown to be multiple names, we'll we'll find the name that connects back to the Bible, and then we'll see whose bloodline these are from. Because again, it's written this way, as if they fell off a wagon. All oh, this perceived person uh, slept with river spirits and created a half person, half spirit. And, you know, so again, it's, 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 it's nonsense to a great degree. Uh, the daughters were ordered by their father to kill the husbands on the first night of their wedding. And they all did this except for one, Hypernestia, okay? Um, Hyperm, right? Nestria, who spared the husband of Lycanus, Lincius, excuse me, Lincius, because he respected her desire to stay a virgin. Danius was angered by his daughter to refuse to do as he had ordered, and he took her to the Argive courts. Now, I remember he's from Libya, and he takes her to the courts of the Argives, which is at Argos, where they ran to. Lincius killed Danis as vengeance for the death of his brothers 
and he and Hyper Hypermestria started the Dainid dynasty, so uh, the rulers of Argos. So again, for all this to be mythology, you get real outcome. Right? And then, where are the children from this? Right? It's right here. It continues to the next dynasty. So again, saying this is all mythology, but yet you record it as the kings of this place, and you show what? The connection to lineage. And it doesn't really sound like a myth. You know, that kind of sounds like like you got exactly what you're looking for, but you're just calling it a myth. You're stamping the false title on it. So the Danaids and their husbands, Apollo Doris, a list of bib bibliothecia, whatever. Preserves not only in the names of the brides and grooms, but also of their mothers. A lot was cast among the sons of Egyptus to decide which Danaids each would marry, except for those daughters born to Memphis who were joined by their namesake. Oh, you're using that name again. Again, you live in a country that had all Greek and Roman statues before you were even born. When you hear about the history of these Greek and Roman statues, you're taught hillbillies brought from another country that couldn't even speak the same language built this magnificent country. They couldn't read, write, or spell in the language that we talk today, but they named everything. They named things ancient names. They named things modern and new names. That is what you're told. People brought from a whole other land that didn't speak the language of Romans, which was Latin, didn't speak the language of Indians, for the most part, which was Hebrew. All you got to do is Hebrew language and Cherokee language, and people break it down for you. So, they have, I think, three different lists that show uh, every, all this. Now, the Apollo list is because they're like, oh, these are the mothers. So, now, if we reduce the size, let's see if we, no, it's not going to pop up right here. If we reduce the size, maybe we can get it all on screen at once. All right. Let's try that. All right. So, up here, the mother. They say the country, right? The mother was Elephantitis, Elephantis of Hypernesta and Gorgophon. Well, that's, that's a weird name. All right, so, and that's how that works. Here, the mother is Europe. Remember the woman carried off with uh, by the bull? She had children, right? And her children is with a Danis, right? Now, if you understand this, whoever the person they call Zeus was in real life, there's a biblical name for him. They're hiding it. That's Belus. Now, if we are to understand this right, that's going to be King Bel Us. That's going to be. King Bellus. So, if we say King Bellus and Be Lam, 
the legendary Earth, uh, Earth, okay, Lost Tribe of Dan, Graves state that Belus is in fact Baal or Baal, but perhaps Belial from the Old Testament. Ta-da! I told you, all they got to do is say the right name and then we connect it. All right? House of Cards. Why they call it a house of cards? Because once you pull the right card, the whole house fall down. And what? What does it mean when it falls down? Connects back to the Bible. What do you mean? They're trying to make modern life not connect to the Bible. Why? Bella is Bellus, who is Zeus. He was the great, great huh? grandfather of Jacob and Esau. That's what the, these people say. Who is Jacob and Esau's grandfather? That's Abraham. Who is Abraham's father? That's Terah. You see what's going on? He was the great, great grandfather of Jacob and Esau. Nah, nah, that's not how the Bible states it. Yosef saw that Esau's descendants were prospiring, excuse me, prospering in their slavery, and he decided to put them in iron shackles to tire them as they worked. Chapter 60, I'm sure that's chapter 60 of Jashir, tells us upon Joseph's death, the Edomites and Zepho fled to Dibna. That's right before Zepho becomes king of Kittim. Because he's going to go and what? When he escapes Egypt, because Joseph's in Egypt. When he escapes Egypt, he what? He goes to Cyprus and then he comes upon a creature. And these islands and these creatures, again, we will connect this when we circle this right back to Japheth's children. We left off at uh, 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 Odysseus stabbing the eye of the giant. And this is the second story. This is the follow-up story of the Iliad. Now, we're not covering the 13-hour Iliad, and we're not covering all, all that stuff. We're just, just going to brief over it. All right, so again, all these things are discussed in the book of Jashir. So none of this stuff shall be a mystery to us if we choose to read. And all these lead to an ongoing dynasty that ends of course, with the lions that kill kings, which has been prophesied. So when we go down past the list, you have other Danids, several minor female characters mentioned in various accounts unrelated to the main myth of the Danis and Danids are also referred to as the daughters of Danis include these, which uh, really don't matter to an extent, right? Um, it's fun. Every time this name pops up, that is Bell, Bellis. Okay? So again, to, to the easiest way to connect these, right? We, we just showed... Uh, we can see how to connect it to chapter 60 of Jashir. Now, we know that Belus, Balaam, there, we'll do Belus. All right, so let's see. Belus, king of the Assyrians. Now, you understand the problem that we have here? Assyrians are Shem. And Saturn, son of Titan, alleging that Belus with the Titans made the war against Jupiter. Jupiter is Zeus. Belus is Zeus. The, this is, 
there is some confusion with the myth, but Belus is the king of the Assyrians. Right? But they keep saying Egyptian. Belus, Assyrian. The Babylonian Marduk as a legendary king of Assyria, Belus. So do you see what's going on? It's all the same person. Marduk is Zeus, is Belus. Right? Isaiah says what? Bel or Belus is perhaps identical with Marduk or Merodach. The Most High calls this fool Merodach. Nebu was a kind of Assyrian Hermes. Isaiah sees the idols carried off as spoils by a command of Cyrus. What does the Most High give Cyrus? Dark knowledge, dark power. Where does this, where does that go? Somehow, there it is. A heavy burden for the beasts that drag them. So they're giant statues. Here's Belus Nimrut, Ninvis, Assyria, Rex. Why do they keep saying Egypt? Why do they keep saying Egypt? Why do they keep saying Egypt? Did he conquer Egypt? Is he the Hyksos king that came in and conquered Egypt at an early period in the Bible? It seems everybody knows what's going on. Belus is Zeus, is Merodach. That's as far as Babylon. You see right here, it say Nivis, and at the time they conquered the world and they built what? A giant tower? You, you know, you're not going to see this in, 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 in this. It's a king of Shem. It's a Shemite king. So what happens? See, this is the story of Balim. The Book of Numbers, chapter 22, every ancient reference to Balaam considers him a non-Israelite, a prophet of the, and the son of Beor, though Beor cannot be identified, right? Bor, right? Though some sources may only describe the positive blessings he delivers upon the Israelites, he is a he is reviled as a wicked man in both the Torah and the New Testament. Baal refuses to speak with the Most High. He did not speak and would not curse the Israelites, even though King Balak, all right, it's a Moabite king. So Balak, black. So where do you think somebody decided we don't call them black? Now, you know, it's, copper colored people versus black and white people and black people brainwashed 250 shades of brown skinned people into calling themselves black All right you are calling yourself the name of the dead king that said I would get Israel he sure couldn't get Israel while Israel had God with him Hmm. Now, where does all this go down? Well, King Shawnee Indians, the main story of Balaam occurs during the sojourn of the Israelites in the plains of the Moabite Desert outside of Utah. Oh, it's inside of Utah, east of the Colorado River, right at the close of 40 years of wandering shortly before the death of Moses on Mount Pit, uh, was it? 
Mount Pick, what is it? I forgot what it's called. It's in Utah. Uh, and the uh, crossing of the Jordan. The Israelites have already defeated two kings in the Transjordan, King Shawnee of the Amorites and King Og of Ogsden, Utah, king of Bashan. Bashan is the basin, the great basin that is called Utah, part of Colorado and all that stuff. Balak, Lower Utah, King of Moabite Desert. If you drive down, what is it, Route? It's Route 77 or 70, Route 70, I think. When you drive down in Utah, it says, what? Moab uh, uh, Temple Exit in the middle of the fucking desert. No gas stations around. If you think you're going to stop, you better have a trunk full of fuel. Consequently, becomes alarmed and sent and sends elders of Midian and his Moabite messengers to Balim, son of Beor, to introduce him to come, induce him, excuse me, induce him to come and curse Israel. Balim's location, Pithor, is simply given as which is by the river of the land of children of his people. In the Messiaic text and the Septuagint, although uh, the Samaritan, the Volga, and the Pisa all identify him as the land of Ammon. So Moab writes his brother, right? And this is when, because later Ammon fights Shion, Shawnee, right? And they defeat them, right? First, Shion whoops everybody's ass. Then they come back and they whoop Shion. And then Shion can grow no more. And you just gotta look this stuff. This is all. This is all American history. This is all the history of North America. The reeds that grow taller than men are in that river that go the the Rio Grande. The Red Vermilion Sea. In the Rio Grande, they make an L. They make an L on the map. This river goes all the way up to here and then turns north. This is going to be where the Red Sea is because this is where Mecca is. This is where Joshua's tree is. This is where the only mountain in the fucking world. In the daytime, it looks like gold. In the nighttime, it looks like silver. The Bullion Mountains. What is Bull Lion? The Lion Bull. Bullion is gold and silver. Hmm? They hid this stuff like children because at that point, that's how they could sink as a group. Says so Bullion Mountains is in the desert of California. The Bullion Mountain sits right next to what you were called, what you were called Joshua. Joshua Tree. Their sister areas. Joshua Tree is where, what, Moses split the rock? So if Moses split the rock in Joshua Tree, and then they went up to Mount Ephraim, You see, it didn't want to spell it for me, right? Now, Ephraim in Sand Peak, right? Because he's going to go up to Pisgah. That's what it is. Pisgah, right?
Mount Pisgah, Utah Peakery. Take take your butt to the top of the 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 highest peak of Mount Ephraim, which is the Pisgah Peak. Shit. Now I'll stand at this peak. Look your ass into the center of the land. This is the promised land. Right? And what is the promised land? It's 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 a giant plain that we call the Great Plains. Hmm? And you look Great Barrier Reef. They say it's in Australia. What's the, what's the great something in Australia? It's just, it's just a barrier reef or something. I forgot what it is. What are you in Basin? Great. Great Basin. You see it right here on the map. So again, this is the land of... of the great Bashan Moab Desert sits right here, right? Oh, nope, that's Nevada. Moab Desert sits right here. What does it say about Moab? My wash basin. The wash basin into the great basin. So all these peoples being named right here is all oops is all living in the same area okay the Cheyenne where do they say the Shoney live now where do they put these guys on um res Don't forget they done moved everybody around, right? So the Shawnee are in, in, in Ohio, so they say, right? No. Or let's see. What's this? So, federal lands and Indian reservations, right? So, Bureau of Indian Affairs is in pink. Wilderness is in gray and whatever that is. Wilderness, wilderness. Well, the words are a little muddy. I can't see which ones are saying, you know, what says reservation. But uh, that's what you would do to find something like this. Actually, you know, you'd look at Google. And because uh, when you pop that up, they give you seven other choices. And so they give you other maps to other states as well. All right. So. California.
So they give the payu and the oot. Now remember, I think the payu is the fly eater. All right. So went down this road a little bit. It's a it's a long road. Back when we did uh, things about Abraham and the pistachios, uh, it reveals a lot of this. You know, like everything I just pulled up from the bouillon to the mounts and the mountains. When you add in the, the pistachios and the trees, right? And of course, once you get into the cedars, you know we're calling cedar trees sequoia. I'm sure if you get into the study of the trees, the sequoia tree is going to be a cedar tree. It's going to be some a kind of cedar tree that grows uh, so high. You know, it, it's 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 all you know, it's all being misrepresented so that you just can't see clearly what it is. But when you retain the innocence of it, it 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 pulls from the mentality of who made these names modern, who kept these names modern, and how clever they could be to hide it. Again, to say, let's just change this to the Colorado River. That is clever. To say, let's name this section Yo Shemite or Yosemite. That's that's not that's not very clever because it's it becomes easy for us to find it. And all right, we're getting to a point where it's uh, competing with uh, the other residents of the house, and you heard Farrakhan Hitler decide that uh, no more uh, no more I'm going to control the sound waves. So have yourself a wonderful day. Uh, take time today to praise the Most High. Shalom.